Hey guys, this is Sam and today we're going to take a look at Photoshop's amazing range of selection tools. When it comes to learning Photoshop, you need to make selections before you correct most of the time. And the better your selections, the better the corrections. Especially when working with photographs, you'll find that the selection tools will really be kind of the backbone of Photoshop. And they allow you to be really creative. Alright, so what is a selection tool exactly? Well, Basically, it's simply a way to select a particular area of a picture, drawing, photograph, logo, you name it, and then apply any edit to only that selected part of the file. For example, uh, let's say you want to brighten up the face of a subject in a photograph. Well, you could simply select the subject's face using any of the selection tools we'll be looking at today, and then you could apply the necessary uh, adjustments, in this case increasing brightness through one of Photoshop's uh, brightness brightening tools, and that would just brighten up the area that you selected. You could also use a selection tool to change the color of a shirt, blur the background of an image, erase an object entirely from a picture, and so forth. Really, the possibilities are limitless. So for example here, I have a picture of a statue, and let's say I just want to select the face of this statue, and I want to forget about the background and the body and so forth. Well what I could do is simply use one of the selection tools once again we're, we'll be looking at today and simply select that face so here is what would the result would be okay, so I did this selection very very quickly simply to serve as an example of uh, basically what a selection is alright so today we'll be looking at a few selections number one uh, we'll be looking at the rectangular and elliptical marquee tools so these are some of the most basic selection tools that you have basically just a rectangular shape and a uh, circle shape. Next we'll be looking at three lasso tools, the freeform, polygonal and magnetic lasso tools. If this doesn't mean anything to you right now, don't worry, we'll be looking at through everything step by step. Next we'll be looking at the magic wand and the quick select tools, my some of my personal favorites. And lastly, we'll be looking at the color range controls. So each of these tools have uh, their own unique way of working and they are sometimes best for a particular edit that you might want to do on a certain photograph. Okay, so back in Photoshop, we'll look at a few pictures here that we have and we'll start with the rectangular marquee tool. So here we have a squirrel in a park and using the rectangular marquee tool, which you will find here uh, at the top of your left hand side panel in Photoshop, so using the rectangular marquee tool we can simply click on any area of the image and then drag to simply draw a kind of a rectangle and once you have an area that you're happy with you can simply uh, let go of your mouse and then you'll see here uh, these little marching ants that we call so these are the little dots you see that are kind of moving around the selection we've just made okay, so, uh, what you see here will be what the selection will be. Next step, let's click on Control J on Windows, con Command Mac, uh, sorry, Command J on a Mac, and this will uh, simply make a copy layer of the selection we've just made. Okay, so if I turn off uh, the view of our background layer, you'll see that what I've done here is simply select uh, this area of the picture, and all the rest has kind of disappeared. And what I could do with it would be apply a just a bunch of different edits to this particular area that I selected. Let's turn back on the view of the background layer and let's say I wanna uh, put some soft light into this uh, particular selection. Well you can see here that uh, just this selection has changed and the rest has stayed the same. So you can see how we can get really creative with that. Let's say I wanna put uh, screen. Well you can see here it becoming whiter. Uh, I could put lighten uh, this one particular one not changing anything at all uh, we could put color dodge and so forth so you can see here that just this area that has been chosen uh, we can apply some particular edits to that area okay, so I'm gonna just throw this layer away and let's take a look at the next one which is our elliptical marquee tool so if you right click on the same area where you chose the rectangular marquee tool then you will have a panel that will open with uh, further options. So here we'll just click on elliptical marquee tool. And let's take a look at an another image here. So we have a car, uh, a 4x4 which is on a beach, and let's say I like the image and everything, 
but I'd like to brighten up a little bit the hubcaps so I'm just gonna here zoom a little bit and using the elliptical marquee tool we're gonna click back into it I'm gonna make a selection just around this area okay so once again you just simply click and drag now anytime you want to move your selection let's say you've made this circle here it looks good but it's at the wrong place well you simply click on the space bar key on your computer keyboard and by holding onto the space bar you simply drag and move your selection okay let's say I'm happy with this selection here I can just let go of my mouse and once again you can see these little marching ants so that means my selection is all ready to go so here I'm gonna go into image adjustments and let's say I wanna I don't know adjust the brightness of this particular area so here I can simply crank up the brightness and you'll see that now uh, this area of the tire of the hubcap is getting lighter so if I click on OK to deselect you simply click Control D or Command D on a Mac and then here you go this is a little bit brighter than before so uh, if I want to cancel this adjustment I'm gonna click Control Z and here you go that was a before alright so these are the two most basic selection tools the um, rectangular marquee tool and the elliptical marquee tools next let's go into the lasso tool so we have three lasso tools first we'll look at the freeform lasso tool the freeform lasso tool basically allows us to uh, make a selection which is really just freeform around just about anything you want if we go back to the example of our squirrel here uh, let's say I want to select the squirrel I like it and maybe I want to work on that squirrel uh, this particular selection later on maybe another day so what I can do is simply select click and drag around this squirrel and you can see here I'm just making a freeform selection okay if I'm happy with my selection here once again I can click control J on Windows command J on a Mac and if you look at our new layer here well we have the selection of our squirrel and it's ready to go so here I could move it around um, I could apply any uh, adjustments I could brighten it up I could uh, duplicate it and so forth All right so I don't need this particular edit so I'm just gonna throw it away okay next we'll look at the uh, polygonal lasso tool so if you click back in here then right click and you choose polygonal lasso tool so this tool allows us to create selections where you have straight lines so let's have a third example here so I have this sign here and let's say I just want to select the sign and I want to forget about everything else so I just want to select this area here this kind of a square so with the uh, polygonal lasso tool it's very easy so I'm simply going to click and go on a straight line so here we go, like this, like this, like this, and here we go. So here we have again our marching ants. We see that the selection has been made, and I'm going to click Control J, and once again you have this selected area here. So you, once again you can basically do anything you want with this particular selection. So you can move it around. Um, and you can make any adjustments that you'd like. So I'm going to throw this away. Alright, so next we're going to look at our magnetic lasso tools. So this particular tool really helps us out in situations where we have edges that have nice contrast or detail. So once again you can right click on your lasso tool panel here and choose ma magnetic lasso tool. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. And let's say here that we see there's a nice contrast between the black and the yellow in this particular uh, road sign so I'm going to zoom back a little bit more and so let's say I want to select just uh, the interior of this sign here so what you have to do is simply click to set an anchor point but then you just have to move your cursor along the edge so you click and you hold on to your mouse 
and I'm simply here dragging and Photoshop is kind of smart enough to figure out that this is only the selection that I'm looking for. Okay, so if you go slowly enough, this can work magic sometimes. So once again, it's good for these uh, situations where you have really an, uh, an object maybe that is really different from the background, the color really stands out, for example, and there's a nice little contrast here. So here I'm almost done. Keep going. And once you've finished your loop, okay, you can simply click, and here you go, I have my selection. Now let's say I'm happy with that selection, I want to make an adjustment, I could go into image for example, I uh, could put a, ba a bit of uh, saturation into this part of the uh, sign, so saturating, the, saturating this a little bit, so you can see here the before and the after, or a little bit more even, hue, and here you can see I can change the color, the saturation and so forth, right? So I'm going to cancel that going to deselect control D and next let's have a look at the magic wand tool so got a magic wand tool selected here so after having selected the magic wand tool you'll need to double check in the options bar so you have the sample size here which tells you the color that the magic wand tool will sample from your image so the higher the resolution of your image the higher the average you'll want so here I think 11 by 11 is pretty good and my tolerance 32 would be okay for now. So I'm going to click on a color, so in this case yellow, and as you can see what this tool m basically did is simply choose uh, all the yellow color that was around. So you can see that it didn't choose the black that is inside, it only chose the yellow. If I want to add to a selection, I can simply hold down to shift. I'm going to go back to my magic wand tool, hold down to shift, and simply click and drag around. Alright, so this looks pretty good here. So you can see how this works. It's pretty quick. So I'm going to deselect, control D. Okay, next thing I'd like to do would be to look at the quick select tool. So the quick select tool is a great way to really make a quick selection. So once again I'm going to go to this image here, I'm going to zoom in back again, and I'm going to simply, using my quick select tool, click here, and then you can drag. So right now it was very quick, Photoshop basically saw that what I wanted was perhaps uh, using this whole road sign here using this quick selection tool by holding on to your mouse and sim simply dragging around Photoshop will increase the selection around an area so if we zoom in a bit more so you can see here the outer edge of this road sign is not chosen yet so I'm simply gonna click and drag to add to my selection there you go so here I'm simply adding to my selection Hold down the space bar key to simply move around. And I'm going to add here. See here I'm chosen too much. So I'm simply going to hold down to Alt. Click and drag to deselect. Okay. Alright, so pretty happy with that. And next thing we'll do is maybe increase the hue or saturation once again, just to give an example. So saturation will desaturate, becomes black and white, or will increase the hue to change the color. Okay, we'll cancel that once again. All right, so so far we've looked at the rectangular marquee tool, the elliptical marquee tool, our three different lasso tools, and the magic wand and the quick select tools. So that's already a lot of selection tools here that we have. But the last one is a pretty nice one that will allow you to select based on color. So the last image we have here is a tree with a background, a uh, nice blue sky here. And let's say I really like this image, but I'm not too happy about the sky. I think the sky is a little bit too 
maybe a little bit too light. I want to darken that up. So how can I simply choose the sky and not select the tree at all and then darken up that sky? Well, if you click on Select and Color Range, Color Range will be able to do just that. So here you can see, by simply clicking on the blue of my sky, um, here only the blue has been chosen. Let's say I want to do the opposite, I want to choose the leaves on that tree. Well, instead of clicking on the blue sky, I could click on one of these leaves. And then suddenly you see I have a couple of the leaves chosen. And if you click more and more, by clicking on the Add button here, Add to Sample, it will simply add more and more to this uh, selection. So here I've chosen too much. I'm going to click Subtract. I'm going to subtract this here. So I don't want to have this. Okay, so this looks pretty good. I've only chosen the leaves, so pretty good. I'm going to click OK. Right now you can see all of these marching ants. Let's say I want to uh, saturate this a little bit. I'm going to go into my image, adjustments, hue saturation, and I'm going to bump this up a little bit. Click OK. Control D to deselect. And here you go. I have a nice uh, saturation here on these uh, leaves. And now let's say I want to darken up this uh, sky. Well, once again, select color range. This time, click on the blue sky. OK. And simply go into Image, Adjustments, Brightness. We'll decrease the brightness. And here our sky is a bit darker. So OK. Control D to deselect. And now we have a darker sky with some brighter more saturated leaves so we have some really saturated colors in here all right guys so this was a really quick overview of uh, the selection tools that we have in Photoshop now Photoshop is a very complicated program and obviously we have covered a lot here in this short video but the point was simply to introduce you to these selection tools so that you could know maybe have an idea of the possibilities that you have when working with these so don't worry uh, if I've covered this too quickly um, I will have videos available here on YouTube for each individual selection tool available on Photoshop. So visit my channel, take a look at the videos I have here on my uh, channel on YouTube. And if this was useful to you in any way, this video, well, please rate, comment, and subscribe. So it's really appreciated. All right, thanks, guys, and see you in my next video.